Good afternoon, and thank you very much for spending a few minutes of your day with me learning about the new ATF ruling that is just published via the Federal Register. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. My name is Dave from Guns and Tactics. I do appreciate you spending that time with me. And like I said, this is basically something that we're all still processing, and it is like 96 pages of information that we're going to kind of talk about, go through and have a sensible conversation about what this means for maybe if you have a firearm with a stabilizing brace, if you were thinking about getting one, or maybe if you are a FFL or something like that. What was basically just ruled was what you are seeing on the screen now. Factoring criteria for firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And this was by the ATF. And uh, as you can see, it is, you know, like crazy uh, crazy long. I'm going to center this in the screen for you guys here, but basically we're all still looking through it, but it is, uh, as you can see there, 98 pages long, and we're going to kind of go through some of the basics of it, but this is now effective as of January 31st. And what does this mean for everybody? Well, the first part of the ruling kind of goes into basically the ATF saying now that, Anything with a stabilized brace is no longer a pistol with a brace, but is now going to be considered a short barrel rifle, which those of you guys that are familiar with that term know that it is basically a rifle with a barrel shorter than 16 inches, overall length 26 inches. If it was above that or longer than that overall length, it was just a rifle. However, what's interesting with a short barreled rifle is obviously, as the name implies, it's a rifle with a shorter barrel, but that requires national registration or what's called a tax stamp. And generally speaking, it involves a $200 fee, federal registration, fingerprints, a photo, and you submit all of this to the ATF. And once you are approved, you receive that document with that tax paid stamp. You could then possess a short barrel rifle. Well, now, but we basically what we have is we have these Pistols with stabilizing braces are now all going to be considered short barreled rifles because traditionally the most common use of these was on AR pistols or other pistols, uh, you know, similar to that, that would use this stabilizing brace. Now the ruling goes in to talk a little bit about the background, about what is a handgun, what is a rifle. It has some pictures here, which we'll show here in just a moment, but basically the beginning of this is just going over what is going, you know, what happened and what is leading up to this and what the ATF considers this. So these are some of the very first braces that were submitted back in 2012, which it's actually kind of crazy to think that this has been going on since uh, 2012, how long the braces have been in the market. But I do have to say this is kind of a, uh, a market that or a product that has kind of revolutionized the market. And when braces first came out, they were this style that you're seeing on screen. And I basically wasn't the hugest fan because I thought they looked weird or they're goofy and I already had some SBRs. But then when I looked at for states that could not have an SBR, you know, because why would they want a pistol in the first place? Why not just go with an SBR? Well, some states you cannot legally own an SBR, but you're able to own a pistol. So now this is an opportunity for somebody to, to have a firearm like this or for traveling. It's really kind of a pain to travel with an SBR. You have to basically submit a, a permission slip for something you've already registered, already paid the tax on, and you basically have to get permission from the ATF to take that out of your state, to maybe go on a vacation to uh, maybe a shooting range in a different state, a training class, a shooting match, or a competition. Uh, legit sporting purposes, you have to get approval from the ATF to leave your state with a short barrel rifle, even for a short period of time. So then the pistols started to become more popular. So anyways, we keep going and now we've had kind of the evolution of the braces. And basically what happened is the ATF kind of kind of went back and forth a little bit on whether you could shoulder a brace or not. And these are, again, different styles of the braces that were on the market. And originally the whole intention of a brace, as you can see here, was for someone to use it with one hand who may not have the ability to normally control or handle a pistol type such as this. So therefore that brace was designed to go on the forearm and stabilize. Now, a lot of people then started to shoulder these and the ATF even published letters saying, you know what, uh, how the firearm is technically does not change its classification by how you use that firearm. Okay, so we're just going to be okay with this. Well, then I can't remember what came first, but then there was saying, no, you cannot shoulder it. Yes, you can. Kind of went back and forth. And then there was a whole bunch of confusion basically in, in the industry. But for the longest time, 
basically it was status quo that pistols with braces were okay. So then there's some additional different types of braces and the ATF goes on and on to basically say that, you know, we want to change these rules. We want to basically make this now a crime. And there's some debate over whether the ATF has the authority to do so. I mean, everyone's going to immediately comment to the federal uh, Supreme Court ruling over the EPA that basically ruled that an executive branch of the government does not have the authority to make type of law, basically. And it only should be uh, in, you know, enacted by a Congress. Well, now we have this uh, proposed worksheet, this point system. So one point, uh, the weapon could be fired from the shoulder. Two points, the weapon may be designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. Three points, the weapon is likely designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. And four points, decisive indicator, the weapon is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. And things that they go into as far as like the stabilizing type, the whether it has a hand guard, the design of it, all that stuff. Well, then the ATF started to receive comments when basically... Uh, they were going through this process and what the ATF is saying is basically best summarized right here. This closes a loophole and prevents circumventing the law. Uh, well, they basically said that this is a way for people to get around registering and having a short barrel rifle, that the pistol brace was the way to skirt that. So instead of going through that process of getting a short barrel rifle, uh, we'll just do this pistol thing and put a brace on it. And then it's like a, you know, an unregistered SBR is what the ATF is saying. Now I do want to kind of go back in history to when all of this was going on. And a lot of people don't even understand the true history of the National Firearms Act. And part of the National Firearms Act was, yes, there was going on with prohibition. There was issues that they wanted to try to regulate and control. But the reality was back in 1934 a $200 tax registration was incredibly difficult for most people to come up with that was an incredible hardship so it truly was about limiting firearms ownership in 1934. now did they want to go after machine guns and short barrel shotguns and short barrel rifles yeah they wanted to regulate and control all of that stuff and again make it incredibly difficult because 200 dollars in 1934 was what is probably over ten thousand dollars today with inflation and everything else i mean heck the the cost of eggs is six dollars for a dozen right but part of the nfa the dirty little secret is that it was also meant to prohibit handgun ownership as well because they were trying to regulate handguns back then and they said well what if somebody just takes a rifle and chops it down as a way to get around this handgun regulations that were going on back then we need to have a way to prevent them from just saying well no that's not a handgun because they were trying to make handguns illegal there was different laws which we could kind of get into the weeds to on a different video but now we also have to have something to prevent a handgun loophole, basically. So then we also had part of this going into the NFA. So keep in mind, there's a little bit more to the story than just regulating SBRs, machine guns, things like that. It was also basically with handguns as well. And uh, there's some other topics on there that discuss this topic more than what I'm getting into now. But as we address down to the comments that they receive and basically are people in, in disagreement and, and of course the department disagrees things like that but now they're even noting basically how it's supposed to be used whether you could be cheek welding it or now it could be sternum mounted you know and all this stuff and they're basically saying that you know that's not the way that these braces are are to be designed now another point that i talked about was for those states that you cannot own a short barrel rifle several people commented basically saying well my state prohibitions of a short barrel rifle and there's uh, basically, this is the only way for me to own this type of firearm. Now, the department response was, the department disagrees that it is required to provide additional options for individuals who may be in violation of state law, which is their basically nice way of saying, hey, if you live in a state where those are illegal, tough crap, pound sand. And that's basically what the department response is for that. And I... I can sympathize with people who live in states where they don't have those firearms uh, accessible to them. And this was a way for them to do that and expand that. And quite frankly, it kind of sucks that now we're going to be in this period where these are going to be potentially illegal. Because in those states where even though we're getting to what to do with your newly found braced pistol that has to be registered as an SBR, uh, those people that are in those states don't have these options because they're not going to be able to register it because it's not legal for them to own. So pretty much they're only option is to destroy or get rid of or remove the brace things like that uh, now let's go to what we're going to have to do according again to this rule and 
There were several comments received about the ATF wait time. Now are you imposing a $200 tax? Should they be grandfathered? Again, all sorts of comments uh, that were received and the, the department is responding to in this you know, mega 96 page uh, ruling here that again, just came out today. So we're all kind of learning and going through this. So what do we do if we have one of these items? These are the current options for unlicensed persons. So, so basically people without an FFL. Number one, we could remove the short barrel and attach a 16 or longer inch barrel. That's option one. Number two, you can now go through the e-form system and submit a form one to register or make a SBR. And the individual does not have to make any markings. Um, you know, you can basically adopt the markings, I believe. Yes, you can adopt the markings and then the individual... Uh, unless there's not marked, then you would have to. And then they are also providing an amnesty period, basically, where you don't have to pay the tax as long as you're doing this within 120 days. You can also permanently remove, dispose of, or alter the stabilizing brace in a such way that it cannot be reattached, thereby removing the weapon from regulation as a firearm under NFA. So basically, you could take off the brace, go from there, or you can turn it into your local ATF office, uh, seriously, like, come on, is, is anyone really going to do that? I mean, turn it into your ATF office, but that's what they're saying is an option. Just, just throwing it out there or you can destroy it again. Who's going to do that? Now, here's the other question is that you have a lot of dealers, manufacturers, whatever that are wondering what to do with this remove. This is again for dealers. Now, if you have a license, you can remove it at a 16 inch or longer barrel. Again, that's putting a huge burden on these shops. Not only would they have to buy a lot of barrels, obtain all these parts, but now pay for a gunsmith or the labor fees to do all of this. So we're already putting a huge burden on some of these shops, dealers, distributors, whatever. Um, you know, if, if this is the option they go down. And again, this is for people who have what's called an SOT or special occupation tax to import and manufacture NFA items. Okay. But that's still an option. This will be very familiar sounding when we get to the next segment for all of those other shops that don't have an SOT as well. We could, uh, for short barrel rifles equipped with a stabilizing brace that are currently in possession, they may register it by completing a form two, and they could go from that process. They could permanently remove, alter. They could turn it into their local ATF office. Or, of course, they could destroy the firearm. Now, what about for all the dealers? Maybe your small mom and pop stores that don't have an SOT. They don't sell suppressors or SBRs or anything like that. Uh, probably the majority of federal firearm licensee holders are non-SOT holders. What are their options? Number one, you could remove the short barrel and attach a 16 inch or longer barrel, thus removing it from the scope of NFA. And again, the problem is they have to buy the barrels for all of that inventory, even though perfectly legal yesterday and prior to that, it was perfectly legal for them to stock that. They bought that. They've paid taxes on it for inventory value. Now they have to buy barrels. They have to pay the labor. And now they're stuck with all this other stuff. So it is kind of a burden on them. Whether you agree or disagree, it is a, a burden on them. And then we go back to option two. We could basically go through their form one, which is what an individual would do as well. And they can make an SBR out of it. So they'd have to register all of those items, turn them into SBRs, adopting the markings on the firearms. And then to transfer this, uh, it would basically have to go through the form four process. So otherwise it's a, you know, a violation of this. So that's probably what some people are going to do, some dealers and things like that. Option three is to permanently remove and dispose of the stabilizing brace, which is also something that I think a lot of dealers are probably going to do. They're just going to take the brace off and that way they're separating them from that and they don't want to deal with the paperwork, the registration, swapping barrels or whatever. So I think a lot of dealers at your local stores are probably going to take option three and permanently remove or dispose or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached, which basically means cutting it up in pieces. Again, they've paid for that. Part of when they bought those pistol firearms with braces, part of that fee was for that brace. So now they're having to destroy some of their inventory. Are they going to have to take a loss? I mean, we don't know just yet what the market value is going to be because this is potentially going to affect the value of a firearm. Again, whether you agree or disagree with this ruling, you could turn it into your local ATF office or you can destroy it. Now, of course, uh, certain government entities that may be in possession they're not necessarily exempt either. They have to remove it, do the barrel thing, submit a form, uh, or they can have, you know, go through the e-form systems, go from there. So the discussion of the tax forbearance, um, you know, that was an interesting topic as well. And basically what it basically uh, is saying here, individuals and FFLs that are not 
SOTs are subject to the provisions and they will not be subject to $200 so long as they do this by May 31st, 2023's. Uh, 2023, excuse me, FFLs that are SOT class one, class two importers or manufacturers, but again, not the class three dealers. They are subject to the provisions of the NFA. And again, the deadline is there. So it's, it's definitely interesting. And then we finish up with basically a bunch of executive orders and costs and paperwork reduction act, and then some legal definitions and all of that. So that is kind of a summary of what's going on. So basically, in summary, if you've made it this far, I'd really do appreciate it. The ruling came out official today, and basically we have 120 days, if you ever are an individual in possession of one of these items, to either destroy it, remove the brace, destroy it, add a longer barrel, or register it as if it was an SBR from the beginning, but now you have 120 days to go through this process, but you don't have to pay the $200 tax. They're kind of they're kind of giving you that one, even though uh, this is something that basically was enacted by the ATF. Keep in mind, Congress or any legal body, legal lawmaking body did not do this. They were basically directed by the executive branch and the ATF has come out and published this rule. In the description, I will put a link so you can check this out yourself. You can read it. And again, there's 96 pages. I have not read it all word for word. I'm summarizing it, trying to share information with you guys so we can have a reasonable conversation about this. Obviously, sound off in the comment section below. I would appreciate if you share this video. If there's someone out there that wants to learn more about this, maybe you are coming to this and you're not as familiar and you came here to learn. Hopefully, this was a valuable conversation for you. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, the best way is through Patreon. We'll have links and stuff in the description. I really do appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.